What's up everybody, Superdorks fan here for Mustang with the update number 55 on this Friday. So, what's new with the Mustang? Well, uh, it's exciting to report that Diode Dynamics has sent me a couple more goodies uh, to put on the car, car this weekend, including uh, the taillight sequencer. So basically, you know, how the t taillights, whenever they're used as turn signals, have the sequential feature. Well, this uh, little plug and play module allows them to function uh, not only just during the turn signals, but also whenever you unlock the car or lock the car, which helps with the blinding issue. Any of you that own 2015 Mustangs know that uh, if you're like popping the trunk, the like taillights can like blind you because they're so bright. So the sequential thing will hopefully, uh, you know, kind of sidestep that a little bit. Also, it'll have the sequential effect whenever you hit the brakes uh, and it'll also do it whenever you're uh, having the hazards on. So it's nice to have that. Uh, and then the other thing that they sent me is the fourth taillight uh, thing. So basically it converts, you know, the uh, lower reverse light in the Mustang that I already swapped over to the Dia Dynamics super white LED. They've now introduced this new thing so that it's the super white LED whenever you have the reverse light on, but whenever uh, you have the brake lights on or you have your headlights on and it's, you know, it'll dim as a red uh, brake light instead. So uh, it's really cool because it just gives you an additional brake light, which especially coming up with the winter here and visibility issues and safety issues and people texting while driving and not paying attention where they're going, having another brake light will certainly uh, not hurt so uh, I figured that was a great install to uh, do as well so I'll be installing those things this weekend uh, and I'll be filming uh, you know my installation on how to do it but they obviously Dia Dynamics has already done their install video and it's much better than anyone that I could do so um, you know I'll be including links in my video uh, to their video as well so you can check that out uh, but really cool uh, you know little things that they've included there and so I'll be putting those on um, the other thing I want to mention real quick is that I am on the stock intake now Back Back whenever I was troubleshooting what was going on with this car and what was the potential issue, I took off the Cobb intake uh, and put the stock one back on thinking that may have something to do with it. And it didn't have something to do with it in the end. Obviously, you know, it's just the loose intercooler hose. But um, since then, I haven't bothered to put it back on. And there's a couple of reasons. The first is that I love the sounds that it made whenever you were getting on the gas and whatnot. But anyone that has an intake on an EcoBoost Mustang, or actually, I think the Focus and Fiesta STs also do this, the bypass valve, the blow-off valve, from the factory with the Mustang here, um, it has this thing so that it blows off even at partial throttle. So even before you let off the gas, when you're actually on the gas, if you're like cruising on the highway and you just give it like a quarter throttle, it'll like have this loud venting sound still. And the intake makes that louder. Obviously stock, it's kind of muted and you don't really hear it for the most part, um, but you do hear it a lot with the intake. And that was something that, you know, driving on the highway for prolonged distances, it's a little bit undesirable to have this constantly going on as you're just cruising along at 65 miles per hour and so uh, that's one of the reasons why and that again that's not Cobb's fault that's just the way all aftermarket intakes when you get all that noise you get all the noise whether it's the sucking in sound of the air to the venting of the blow off valve and all that stuff you get it all so um, that's just the way intakes are and so um, after talking with uh, you know Tune Plus um, you know who I'm working with on this uh, Pro Tune uh, you know he said that's it's not even a necessity to have an intake until later on with more power and whatnot. So I'm going to leave it off for now. I'm going to save it. I will be reinstalling it eventually at some point, um, probably once the car is louder because of other things like an exhaust. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave it off. So just, you know, let you guys know about that. That's why you don't hear any of the whooshing sounds you've heard before. The other reason why I haven't reinstalled it as well is because I still have the fitment issue with it. If you watch the install video, then you'll know that it had this fitment issue where there's two holes already drilled in the engine block and uh, those were used to mount this mounting bracket that Cobb included to the intake and for some reason Ford must have messed up the holes when they drilled mine from the factory or whatever but I can't get the bolts to thread I never could and so it never quite looked right it never fit on there perfectly and so that's something I want to fix before I reinstall it as well and uh, maybe I'll do that in the spring or something so that's another reason why I'm leaving it off but I just want to make you guys aware of that you know like I said so now current mods as far as engine stuff goes is just the access port with the tune um, from Adam at Tune Plus and then uh, you know I obviously have the suspension stuff but as far as the engine goes it's just the tune for now and uh, that'll hopefully be changing down the road here but for now that's all that the car has so so uh, that's it though as far as all the updates on the Mustang guys, so I'll send it back to me at the news desk for this week's news. 
Right, so this week's news, the first story is something that if you follow me on social media, then you've already heard all about this and I've uh, probably talked about it. But anyway, it's that the 2017 Super Derrick's STI reportedly will come with a hybrid powertrain. And um, I know a lot of people think this is like clickbait or something, but it seems to be somewhat legitimate. It's from uh, the reporters from Motoring, uh, which is a publication in Australia. And they seem to get a lot of Subaru stories in that, you know, they have pretty good credibility, I think. Anyway, this is again still just a rumor, so take it with a pinch of salt. But anyway, what this is saying is that it will be receiving for the new new one that's coming out in 2017. It's going to be on the new Impreza platform. It's going to be based off the Impreza like it always has been. Um, and so it's going to get that new platform, uh, but it's also going to have the FA20 motor that's in the regular WRX now, uh, but it's going to be bumped up. And the power total is going to be like 322 horsepower, this is saying. And they're saying that it's going to have, you know, obviously a turbocharged four-cylinder engine like it always has, but it's also going to have uh, an electric motor that will power the rear wheels and that the turbo engine will be powering the front wheels which is a really interesting idea so um, you know should help with some of the turbo lag and whatnot with the electric motor and uh, you know with all the other you know hyper cars and whatnot doing this and it trickling its way down to ordinary cars this seems like something that is going to come if not in 2017 at some point in the future here it's kind of inevitable um, it also says it's gonna have a dual clutch transmission which is a first here for Subaru. Now, I don't know if they will offer a manual still or not. That's still uh, unsure, but uh, of course we all hope that they will. The publication continues to go on and say that uh, it will also continue as only a sedan. There will not be a hatchback version of this as well. Um, so at least not for now. And they also said that in addition to the regular hybrid version that's coming supposedly next year, uh, they're also working on a plug-in hybrid version, which um, I'm guessing would have even more of a hybrid power plant. And that one uh, won't be coming out though until the Tokyo Auto Show in 2018. So that one's a couple years off. But in the meantime, they're saying this could come next year. Just a rumor, but that's what we're hearing. Uh, an exciting rumor that we've heard is the revival of the Honda S2000. And we've heard stories like this ever since the S2000 was discontinued. But now, this actually seems to have some credibility to it because... Uh, you know, with the Miata, now the Fiat 124, a Barth that'll be coming out and whatnot. Honda wants to get back into this. And obviously they have their small little K-sized Roadster for Japan, but that isn't suitable for us here. We know that Honda is also working on a baby NSX with about a 400 horsepower, thanks to an electric motor and pairing that with the Honda Civic Type R 300 horsepower turbo four, and that will be the baby NSX. But they said that this S2000 could actually be more of a priority and be the uh, car they're focusing on the most right now and putting that on the back burner just a little bit, but they're still gonna do both cars according to uh, the rumors here. And so this is what Autocar is saying at least. They're saying that it's gonna have two different engine options. There's gonna be a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, which could very well be very similar to the same one that we see in the current brand new Honda Civic. Um, and they're saying that uh, that could be uh, about 180 horsepower, which is less than the uh, one that's in uh, the old S2000, which would be a little crazy. Maybe that'll be for overseas. I'm sure the car will probably maybe lose a, bit, a little bit of weight or whatnot. But uh, they said the exciting version though is that there's gonna be a Type R version, according to these reports, and that that's going to have a slightly detuned version of the 306 horsepower turbocharged four cylinder from the Civic Type R. And they said that both would have a six speed manual transmission, which sounds great. Hopefully uh, those rumors turn out to be true and the car comes before too long here. Uh, some sad news is uh, McLaren has finally built the last P1. So they you know, were committed to doing 375 of them and they've just built the last one. So they just are gonna build the uh, GTR versions which are exclusively you know, racetrack cars. Um, and they said they're not doing any other versions of it and they have no plans to do a successor for now. They said that this car kind of set a benchmark and they wanna wait until technology progresses. And once technology has progressed to a point where they can outdo themselves, then they will. But in the meantime, they're sticking with the P1, and that's certainly a, a great car to go out on for the meantime here. I'm sure we'll see another one, uh, you know, in five years, or 10 years, but at some point, I'm sure another one will come. Next is uh, Porsche has officially announced that they're reviving the 718 name for the new Boxster and Cayman. So, um, you know, what they're doing here, we already know that the Boxster and Cayman are both going to turbo four cylinders here for next year. And with that change, they're going to be getting this new name. So it'll be called the 718 Boxster and the 17, 718 Cayman. And uh, in a little switch as well, the Cayman is going to be cheaper than the Boxer. Normally it was the other way around, but they're uh, flipping the tables on that, which is uh, cool to see. And um, so, you know, 
they're just going to have the turbo four cylinders have different amounts of horsepower depending on which trim that you get, even all the way up. I think they said the lowest one is going to be about 240 horsepower, and then uh, it goes all the way up to the Cayman and Boxer GTS, which will have about 370 horsepower from the same engine, just obviously heavily modified. So great to see those, um, but yeah, we now know that it will be called the 718. They're doing that because it's a historical thing uh, that goes back to the 718 race car, which was also a mid-mounted uh, four-cylinder engine uh, car, and so uh, very cool to see the little hearkening back to history there. Other exciting Porsche news is they've officially greenlit the Mission E, which is the stunning car that we saw um, then was released at the Frankfurt Motor Show here just a couple of months ago. And because of the overwhelmingly positive response, Porsche has decided they're going to make it and they're planning to launch it by 2020. So, you know, technological masterpieces like this don't happen overnight. And I'm sure there's lots of R&D work that needs to be done in order for this to be production ready. But at least they're committed to doing it and we'll have it here uh, in five years or so. And speaking about, you know, technologically impressive vehicles, uh, the Chinese university has just built a brain controlled car. So, you know, with Tesla and whatnot all, you know, pushing for autonomous cars, where you don't have to do any kind of thinking while driving. Um, you know, this is they're introducing this here in China. Uh, they're working on a brain-controlled car. So basically, you wear this, like, crown thing, they're calling it, that has sensors, of course, that can pick up on your what your brain is telling it the car to do, essentially, and so it can unlock or lock, it can accelerate, brake, all these kind of things that you can control. Uh, and it's this prototype SUV that uh, they're doing this in. Uh, who knows if this will actually take or if anyone even wants this technology. Um, I mean, if I have to think about what I'm doing anyway, I'd rather just use my hands, I think, to do it than just sitting there and thinking, okay, now steer, now accelerate. Just kind of seems a little counterintuitive to me, but um, you know, I think Tesla's on the right track with just autonomous cars and not having to pay any attention at all. But, um, you know, for those that always wanted to mind control their car, you may actually be able to do it in the future somehow. Um, other uh, news, back to normal car maker news. Hyundai has officially unveiled the Genesis G90, which is the Equus replacement. And then, you know, the new car that'll be the first one launched under the new Genesis brand that Hyundai is, uh, you know, establishing. And we have some pictures of it here. It looks really nice. It uh, is a very classy looking car. It's going to basically offer S-Class size for e-class money so um great to see that they've uh, rolled that out we don't have any kind of prices or anything like that yet but i'm sure it'll be a very impressive car especially for the money speaking of the e-class though mercedes has just upped the game again they've unveiled the new e-class interior now we haven't seen the whole car yet but we do have official pictures of the interior here and it looks really slick. They said they've taken a lot of the lessons they've learned from the S-Class and because technology is advancing so quickly, they've already upgraded. So this is actually a more technologically advanced interior than the S-Class, which just came out two years ago. So this is uh, how it looks. It looks really luxurious, extravagant, and very high tech at the same time. I think Mercedes is making the best interiors in any car period right now. And um, so very impressive to see them take it one step up. And uh, I'm sure that'll help the e new E-Class to sell like hotcakes. Speaking of selling like hotcakes, the Ford Mustang is officially sold out for the entire 2016 year in Australia. Uh, they said only 4,000 are coming, I think, to Australia. And out of those 4,000, uh, most of them are V8 hardtops, which is no surprise, you know, because Australians, like the rest of the world, has been clamoring to get the Mustang forever and now that they finally can. I'm sure there's lots of people have been saving up for the top, top of the line model and now they can finally get it. So cool to see they're sold out and that they're gonna be selling so well in Australia. Other uh, European uh, Ford news and from around the world is uh, there's some new spot shots of the Ford EcoSport, um, which is a car we don't get here in America, but um, it's a car that is around in the Indian, Chinese, and South American markets. But I think they're giving it a restyling here, and uh, it looks like there's going to be um, some, they're, they're working on it for America. Whether it comes in the immediate future or until, if they wait until the full redesign, which will be coming in a few years, remains to be seen. But we do see that they're actually working on it here in America, so who knows, you know, what that's going to lead to. I mean, I would hope, you know, since this is such a hot market that Ford would jump on this, and I think that's why they're testing it here in the States, because they're probably toying around with the idea of just porting this car straight over from those markets, you know, making a few quick changes for the American market here and throwing it on sale. Because otherwise, Ford's going to have a long time to wait before they actually have a CUV competitor in this, you know, tiny little crossover segment. So um, cool to see them testing that, and um, we'll have to just wait and see what they decide to do with it. 
Um, also, there's a report this week that BMW is finally going to be making an i8 Spider, and that we'll be seeing it here um, at some point uh, in the relatively near future. Uh, and so we just have some renders of it here. It looks uh, very cool. And uh, they said that also when they do introduce this, they're also going to be introducing a power upgrade for the i8. Um, and so they're going to be doing a two liter turbocharged four cylinder instead of the three cylinder engine from the Mini that's currently in it. And they said that uh, with that plus a more powerful battery, it'll be up to 450 horsepower, which is uh, going to make it a little bit more uh, performance oriented. It was already a, a good sports car, but now it's going to have almost supercar performance uh, to match the supercar looks. So very cool to see that. And uh, another uh, super coupe, the Lexus LC500 is officially going to be coming uh, to the Detro Detroit Auto Show. And um, so it's uh, you know going to be based off the LFLC concept that we saw. Uh, and this version, of course, the 500 will have the 5 liter V8 from the RCF. Um, we also know there's going to be a hybrid version with a V6 that will be coming at some point too called the 500H probably. And then uh, they also said that there should be an LCF that will come at some point down the road and could have around 600 horsepower which would be awesome and kind of maybe a follow-up to the LFA, which is very cool to see. Uh, probably more of a luxurious car, but still awesome to see that nonetheless. And the last story this week is that the Fiat 124 Barth was spied running around, and we've seen some spy shots of it before, but now we can see that the camo is a little more heavier, and, you know, I think it's because now they've officially unveiled the regular 124. This Barth is going to have some upgraded, you know, body panels and more aggressive styling. You can also see it's got different wheels, which probably won't make it to production, but you've got different wheels, quad exhaust tips, and a few other things. But, um, yeah, there's no official words to when we're going to see the Abarth version, but, you know, it's been rumored that, uh, you know, we know the 124, the regular one, will be coming out next year, and the Abarth could follow the year after. So maybe we'll see an unveiling of this a little bit after the 124 sales uh, start going on. But either way, great to see them working on that, and uh, hopefully it gets a, a over 200 horsepower power plant. That would be awesome. Anyway, that's it for all the news this week, guys. So send it back to me in the car. All right, so we got some traffic, but I'll leave you guys a nice little acceleration here. Second gear this time, like I always do. <laughs> this thing pulls so strong now. And with this tune, it has a slightly different tone to the engine as well. I think it's just the way the car is building boost is different than it was before. Uh, and I'll explain more about that again in my uh, upcoming Tune Plus uh, Tune review. But yeah, <laughs> definitely fun and uh, makes this car feel a little bit more like a traditional turbocharged car with the, the power coming on a little bit later. But anyway, uh, anyway, I'll uh, just leave you guys with that. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, acceleration here and enjoyed the weekly update and I'll see you next week. Take care.